Hi, welcome. I'm Brenton Schellenbach, and today's practice is all geared towards creating space and openness in the upper back. So get out your yoga mat and join me. This is a beginning and intermediate practice. The only thing I might suggest is that one or two, actually two blocks would be nice for your practice if you have them. If you don't, it's totally optional. So uh, just have fun, do what you can do, and create as much space as possible. Thanks for joining. Let's get started in puppy position. You can go back to tabletop with pelvis stacked over knees. Walk the hands all the way forward so your spine is more in downward facing dog shape. If your forehead doesn't comfortably come to the floor, you can always place it up on a block. And if the shoulders aren't comfortable with the arms straight overhead, bring them back more to a cactus position or start to lower the hips more towards the heels. So find a place for the upper back, can release and relax, back of the neck, super soft. Begin to press back to tabletop position and press back to extended child's pose, balasana. Hips to heels, knees as wide as you like. Gently pick the torso up off the floor, elbows lift. Look forward, take the shoulder blades on the back and then walk over to the right for side child's pose. Use your left hand to traction some space. Press your left fingers down and away from you and anchor your pelvis back to your heels. Lift the chest and walk back through center. Tent the fingers forward, stretch the heart forward Press your sacrum towards your belly, and then walk over to the left. Side child's pose, other side. The breath should already be mastering this experience, full and rich, in and out through the nose. And pick the chest up and walk the pose back forward. And you can walk the hands back. If you have two yoga blocks, grab them. And if you don't, do this whole sequence without yoga blocks, so it doesn't matter. If you have them, you'll place them for down dog with the hands right on top of them, shoulder width distance apart. And we'll all meet in downward facing dog pose. With the hands lifted, the shoulders get a little bit more of a stretch. Really focus on tilting the sitting bones high and letting the spine tumble out of the pelvis. And breathe. On your next inhale, lift the hips and shift your weight forward to plank position. Chin forward. And exhale, you'll move the pose back to downward facing dog. Inhale, lift the hips, roll forward, plank. And exhale, keep the tailbone to the sky, go back, down dog. Last one, inhale, come forward, plank position. This time on your exhale, we'll take Chaturanga Dandasana to the floor. Hover at your bottom point and then relax your legs and thighs. We'll take a low cobra here. So hands hovering from the floor or from the blocks. Squeeze shoulder blades together on the back. Get the back of the neck super long and the legs anchored back behind you. Root the hands, press the hips up. And from here, we can go back 
to downward facing dog pose. Lift onto your tippy toes and lightly set the knees down to the floor. This is where we can move the blocks out of the way if we have them. Keep the breath anchored and start to set the forearms down parallel to each other for dolphin pose. The elbows splay out, take the arms wider and the wrists even wider than that. So you wanna get your base strong into the floor, the elbows squeezing in, and then you can tuck the toes and gently lift the hips high for a bent legged dolphin pose. So work on grounding the forearms and energizing the inner wrists toward each other, inner elbows toward each other. With the knees bent, you can really lift through the pelvis, try to get the spine toppling more vertically in the space. When you need to release, lower down at the knees. One at a time, step the hands back and move back, downward facing dog pose. Where you can walk yourself all the way into a standing forward fold. So take the feet as wide as you like, toes can anchor in. And here, let's release the upper back completely. So let the knees bend as much as your body needs to do that. Start to work out your shoulders. You can start to roll them or twist them or just do anything that feels good. Relax into a standing forward fold. Next inhale, lift to halfway and hold. Spend some time here. Use your upper back muscles to integrate shoulder blades on the back, belly strong. Let the arms dangle down from the shoulders. Exhale, forward fold. Next inhale, halfway lift. And exhale, push until you're standing upright, Tadasana. Inhale, lift the arms. Exhale, hands together, thumbs ground to the heart. Inhale, lift the arms up to the sky. And exhale, forward fold pose. Inhale, stretch forward halfway, strong shoulders. Exhale, hands under shoulders. Step the feet back one at a time, plank. Inhale. Exhale, look forward and control your chaturanga to the floor. Knees on the floor for support if you need. Ground your pelvis, scoot your hands back, keep your chest open and ripple upward slowly to a straight arm back bend. Fan your toenails open, open. Use your belly to spine connection to take you up and back, downward facing dog pose. Assess and relax. The next inhale breath, stretch the right leg all the way up to the sky. And on your exhale, with control, draw the knee into the chest and the foot between the hands. Drop down to the back knee. Stretch your pelvis forward for low lunge pose, Anjaneyasana. Take the hands up to the right thigh, lift the spine. Integrate from the front of your left kneecap through the front hip bone, through the left armpit. And then reach the arms all the way up to the sky. If it feels good, interlock the fingers and take a side stretch over to the right. Try to keep your legs strong as you lift the rib cage and spill it over the right side of the pelvis. Keep your right buttocks hugging towards the center. Come back to upright, inhale. And Next, exhale, float the hands down. Lift your back leg to plank. 
and step forward with ease, forward fold pose. Inhale to halfway lift, integrated shoulders. Exhale, push down and rise up to stand. Inhale, stretch the arms all the way up to the sky. Exhale, ground the hands at the heart. Full inhale, offer the arms up. And exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, stretch the heart forward. Exhale, ground the hands. And step the right leg back to Anjaneyasana, low lunge on the left. Wave the heart to upright. Integrate from the front of your right knee all the way up through your front right hip, right armpit, and then stretch the arms up to the sky. If that side stretch felt good on the other side, interlace the fingers except the pointer. Hug everything into the spine as you lift up and over the left side of the pelvis. Left buttock still hugs into the center line. Keep the breath strong and fluid to the lower abdomen. Try to peek up to the ceiling underneath your right armpit. Lift back up to upright, release the arms, float the fingers down, ground the hands, and we'll gently step the back foot forward, forward fold pose. Next inhale, stretch the heart forward halfway, and exhale, neutral hips, press to standing posture. Inhale, lift the arms up overhead, stretch the front hips, exhale, ground the hands at the heart. Release the hands down by the side for Tadasana Mountain Pose. Close the eyes and breathe. Feel the inner arches lift, legs strongly pull up from the knees. Lift your whole, to whole torso up into the armpits, but drop your shoulders back into place. Squeeze them together on your back, but don't go into a back bend. Lift the skull up and back. Let's begin setting up for Utkatasana Chair Pose. Begin to take the pelvis down and back, strong legs, and either float the arms by the ears or take a Cactus Pose variation. Next, exhale, swim the hands behind you, shelf the torso. And next, inhale, wave the arms forward, back and forth. On your exhale, take the arms back, strong belly, point the skull tip. Inhale, wave the arms forward, Keep steady in your legs. Steady legs, exhale, go back. Don't scoop your tailbone here. And inhale, wave forward. Utkatasana chair. Exhale, forward fold pose, release. Next inhale, integrate the shoulders as you draw up halfway, arms back. And exhale, ground the hands. Legs step back to downward facing dog pose. Settle in. On the next inhale breath, you mean to stretch the left leg all the way up to the sky and exhale, draw the left knee into chest and control the foot down between the hands. This time stay lifted on your back leg for high lunge. Wave your heart forward. Squeeze your legs into your pelvis and wave the spine upright. Hold strong here. Back heel really lifted. And offer the arms up to the sky or to cactus when you're ready. Three-dimensional inhale. Set your legs here so that you can do other things with your torso. And then we'll twist. Take the hands down at the heart. Stretch all the way forward, 
Tug the skull away from your right heel, hold your belly, and then rotate along that same axis as you now take the right elbow to the left knee. Root fingertips, lift elbows to stack one on top of each other. And as best you can, take shoulder blades together, take the heart toward the thumb, and look up at the sky. Continually draw long from your back heel to your skull. And then you can look down, place the hands to the floor. And gently move the back foot forward to Uttanasana, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift pose. And exhale, push and stand upright. Next inhale, lift the arms up to the sky. And exhale, ground the hands together at the chest. Inhale, wave the arms, full breath. And exhale, forward fold pose. Next inhale, integrate your shoulders, draw up halfway. Exhale, hands under shoulders. And move the left leg back this time so you're in high lunge on your right. Set your legs to the floor, squeeze them into the hips. Wave the heart forward. When you feel very plugged in here is when you'll begin to gently roll the spine up to stand. Keep the left frontal hip bone drawing in. Wave that length through the left armpit and eventually through the fingertips as you raise them up or into cactus. Take your time to set the legs here so that they're integrated enough that they won't change when you start to do something else with your torso. Test it, take the hands at the heart, shelf the torso, grow long from your back heel through your skull and then rotate on that axis. That means keep your belly strong. Take your left elbow to your right knee and keep working the length. Work your shoulders into place on the back so the chest keeps moving towards the thumbs. You can add a look up to the sky when you're ready, but keep that neck rotation in the same line as your spine. When you're ready to release, look down at the floor and gently release the hands and gently move the back foot forward, forward fold. From extension to flexion we go. Next inhale, integrate your shoulders and lift to halfway. And exhale, push until you're standing upright. Inhale, wave the arms, get longer through your torso. And exhale, ground the hands at the heart. Inhale, wave the arms up. And exhale, standing forward fold pose, Uttanasana. Let's release the shoulders here. So either take your hands up to your low back, squeeze the elbows toward each other. If you have more space, interlock the fingers behind there, squeeze the upper arms still. And very slowly, as you keep tilting the sitting bones to the sky, you can begin to play the edge of that bind overhead. Stay muscularly intact through the arms, the upper arms, the forearms, that means slight bend in the elbows. Use the strength of the arms to find some openness. Twist over to the right when you're ready. So bend your left knee and then twist your left armpit towards it. Come back through center and move over to the other side. Bend the right knee, glue the right armpit towards it, neck is, stays super soft, arms squeeze in. Come back through center and release the hands. Take the fingers to the floor. Next inhale, halfway lift, feel that integration and exhale, push until you're standing upright. Inhale, wave the arms, lift the ribs, breathe in. Exhale, keep that space, 
and ground the hands at the heart. Inhale. Stretch the arms all the way up to the sky. And exhale. Forward fold pose, Uttanasana. Inhale, halfway lift. And exhale, ground the hands. Step the legs back, drop the knees to the floor, and send the pelvis back for child's pose. Shake out your body here a little bit. Wave left to right in the pelvis or the shoulders or the skull. Release your breath. When you're ready, press back up through tabletop position. Tuck the toes under, lift the knees up and draw back, downward facing dog. Keep the hands grounded, armpits lifting towards wrists. Walk the feet in. Forward fold pose. Inhale. Halfway lift, integrated shoulders. Exhale. Standing forward fold pose, Uttanasana. Inhale again. Halfway lift, integrate your shoulders, stretch forward. Exhale, push into your floor and stand upright, Tadasana. Inhale, wave the arms up to the sky, Urdhva Hastasana. Breathe in. Exhale, Samastitihi. Hands draw together at the chest. Let's set up for Warrior One pose, Virabhadrasana One. Right foot stays forward. Step your left foot back, toes out turned. Ground your feet, squeeze up through your legs. Then begin to, to descend into the right knee. <clears throat> Play your hip stretch in the back leg more than the bent leg in the front leg. Stay connected to your back heel rooting as you lift the arms. And if arms by ears doesn't feel good, go to cactus instead. And then if you feel good, stay connected through your back heel rooting down. Stay every piece of your body, bones lifting, as you now take the hands together, arms keep pulling back by the ears as you lift the heart and open to an upper back back bend. Next inhale, lift all the way up, keep that space, breathe in. And exhale, hands at heart, down to hips, and step your back foot forward. Good job. We'll move towards that same hip stretch and that same upper back opening, but we'll move it into balance. Keep your right foot grounded and lift your left foot behind you. Grab the inner arch of it with the left hand. Integrate left hip bone into your body and approach dancer's pose at any time. Left frontal hip bone draws into your body as you start to draw your left kneecap first down and then up behind you, lift your left foot, but keep lifting through your heart. Three full dimensional full breaths into lower abdomen. Right arm might extend by right ear. Release your pose at any time. Take a moment to stand still and observe your experience. Let's approach Warrior One, Virabhadrasana One, on the other side. So keep the left foot forward this time, step the right foot back. Toes out turned. Connect to your feet here. Root into your ground. Squeeze your legs up into your pelvis. Frontal hip bones draw into your body towards your spine at an even rate. As you begin to descend into your left knee, 
Think about your lunges as like your back leg doing a bunch of work and your front leg expresses that by deepening a lunge. Now lift up through the arms and keep that whole line of energy strong from your right front knee drawing up through your right hip, drawing all the way out through your armpits. And as you start to lift yourself into an upper back back bend, take your whole front body towards your spine as well. Front body shouldn't be pushing forward in back bends. Instead, draw it back as you lift back. Lift up when you're ready and release your hands to the heart and down to the waist. Step the feet together. Take one hand to your heart, one hand to your belly and shake. While you're shaking these parts of your body, breathe deeply out through your mouth. Let your eyes close. And release your hands down by your side. Just trying to reset for dancers. So go ahead, bend into your right leg this time. Grab onto the inner edge of your foot behind you. Start with integrating your right frontal hip bone into your body. Lengthen all sides of your spine evenly. Think about decompressing as you start to lift into a back bend. It's easier on the spine when the leg is self-sufficient, so get the leg strong enough, lifting through the right arch, through the right toes, keeping the front of the body drawing towards the spine, and then, of course, pressing the back of the heart forward and up, as if the heart wants to leap up and over the back of the pelvis and land somewhere on that foot. Release the pose at any time. Stand and observe. Work out through your shoulders a little bit and your neck. And on your next inhale breath, wave the arms all the way up to the sky. And exhale, forward fold all the way down to the mat. Inhale, integrate your shoulders. Stretch your heart forward, use your tummy. Exhale, hands under shoulders. Step the feet back. Drop your knees down to the floor for child's pose. Okay, but it's here that we're going to take the pose a little bit upside down. So I'll pursue a midroom headstand. And if you don't have a midroom headstand in your practice, this is where you get to be a little bit more creative. So you can take headstand at the wall, shoulder stand if that's in your practice, legs up the wall pose. Or you might just lay with your back on the floor and swing your legs up onto your sofa or an ottoman or something like that. So whatever you're choosing, start to pursue that now. So we're going to take the body upside down. And if you're in a more active version of the pose, you're giving the upper body something to participate with. Now, of course, when you're working with your inversions, try to control how you move in and out of your postures. And some of those poses I just listed are more active than others. So just see what the pose is requiring or asking of you and go fully into it. You can, of course, exit your pose at any time. And we'll move on. So if you want to be in your pose longer, pause this video and hang out some more. That'll be nice for you. 
When you're finished, try to keep your heart low to the ground as you pursue child's pose. So don't take the head up just yet. Keep the inverted benefits in the upper body by keeping it close to the ground. You can begin to sit upright on the heels. And we'll move towards our seated postures. So find a seat and begin to set up for Janu Shir Shasana. If you know that you need your pelvis more lifted, sit up onto a blanket or some blocks. And then bring your right foot into tree pose and your inner left leg. Take these opening moments to ground your hands and really stretch out of your pelvis evenly on all sides. Become as integrated as you can through your torso. And then lift your arms all the way up to the sky. Keep that integration. Begin to lightly turn your heart towards that left knee and lightly fold forward. Not the biggest forward folds. Just find a place of comfort that you can go in and out of. We will pursue some dynamic movement here. We'll lead with the right hand as we reach it around and behind us to the outer right hip. Ground into it, and then lift your hips up and roll your heart open on top of that right shoulder for stargazer pose. Gently control as you set your hips back down and then go back to your John Yushir Shasana. You might lift your arms to go through, or you might just go straight through to your fold. Lead with your right hand. As you inhale, lift up and go back to Stargazer Pose. Hand behind the right hip, hips press up, tailbone pressing forward. Go one more time as you ground, twisting over your left leg. And again, on your own time, stretch back with your right hand, lift your hips, and stretch. Lower the hips down. Take the feet together for Baddha Konasana. Lift out through the spine and then switch sides. Left foot comes to tree pose on the inner right leg. Keep the right leg strong in neutral rotation. It can also be bent if that feels better. Start by lifting on the inhale and on the exhale to take an easy fold. You feel no stress, no strain in your lower back. So keep playing around, don't settle. Lead with your left hand. As you swing around, ground it behind you, fingers point away from you, and lift your hips for stargazer. You wanna feel the chest really open here. On your exhale, ground your hips and gently move back to your Janyu Shir Shasana. Take this twice more on your own breath. And when you're finished, turn to face the front of your mat, crisscross applesauce, feet position, and we'll take some last shoulder stretches. Let's begin by interlacing our fingers, pushing our palms away from us on the front, Drag your shoulder blades away from each other. Drag your chin back. 
Keep lifting through your whole spine, abdomen strong to the back wall of your body. Deep, warm breaths. And if you can keep the clasp, straighten out your spine and take the arms overhead, palms pressed to ceiling. If that doesn't feel good, cactus arms is a perfect alternative. You want to do something that unmistakably feels good. We can release the hands, and this time tent them behind us. Wrap the elbows toward each other and puff the chest forward. Ground through the pelvis, and you're going to lift up and over the back of your pelvis, your throat as an extension of your spine. So as your throat lifts up and back, your whole spine coils back with it. And then lift through the heart and drop forward, seated position. This is where those yoga blocks are gonna come super in handy. We'll use them to set up for Shavasana. So if you don't have yoga blocks, your modification is regular Shavasana. If you have blocks, we're gonna to go to our supported fish position. So your first block at its medium height is gonna shelf your shoulder blades. Shouldn't go below the shoulder blades. You're gonna nestle yourself there and take your second block at its highest height right underneath the head. Now again, don't settle for discomfort here. So if you're, keep, you're continually finding spots of discomfort, just keep shifting. No matter which variation you're in, regular Shavasana or the lifted fish pose, take constructive rest for your legs. So with the feet close into the pelvis, let the knees rest on each other. Arms out by the side. Make sure you feel your upper back opening here. So if you can't, lift your chest one side at a time and scoop the shoulder blade more towards your spine. And then use the floor and your clothes to hold it there as you lower that side of your chest down. So in Shavasana, you should feel vertical wrinkles on your upper back skin from the skull to the pelvis. And start to roll your head, your skull, left to right. Start to wake up through your hands. Take your hands behind your upper back. Thread the fingers together and then cup your hands behind your head, elbows wide. Lift your skull with your hands and relax your skull into it. And drag your skull, your neck back. Relax your elbows open. And then use that to support your way on up. If you're in fish pose, if you're in Shavasana, just roll over to the side. Spending as little effort or energy as possible. Come to a seated position. Integrate your whole spine. And without going to a back bend, stretch your arms open like wings. Drag your shoulder blades together. Stretch open the front chest. And then gently soften the hands together at the heart. Keep your upper back lifting, chest open as you stretch the back of your neck and drag your chin down to your chest. Thank you for joining in our Free the Upper Back class. Namaste. Namaste.